This lecture is about coherent detection for optical communications. In particular, I'll be giving you the motivation on why the industry has moved from the starting point of IMDD and is moving towards coherent detection in greater and, and greater numbers. So let's start with IMDD. The IM refers to intensity modulation, whereas the DD refers to direct detection. So let's start with the transmitter side where we're talking about intensity modulation. The simplest example of intensity modulation is for a binary data transmission. In this case, the logical zero will send no light, no light, no power. For a logical one, we will send light, and essentially the information is contained in power. No power, logical zero, power present, logical one. At the receiver side, we do direct detection, by which we mean we employ a photodetector. And the photodetector is essentially a square law device, therefore it responds to the square of the incident electron, electric field, and this is essentially a power detector. So when there is no data signal present, when we have a logical zero, so there's a data signal present, but the bit that we're sending has no signal, in that case, we'll still at the photodetector output see some photocurrent. And this current will be due to dark noise, which is the sensor misfiring, seeing, declaring light when there is no light presence. And there'll also be a thermal noise. And the thermal noise comes from the electronic circuits, and of course it's always present uh, in any electronic circuit. Of course these noises are fairly low, and so when we send a logical zero, we'll be detecting very low power uh, levels on the photodetector. Now, when there is an optical signal present, in that case, we'll have, of course, these same two sources of noise. There'll be an, an additional source of noise, known as shot noise. But, of course, there'll also be the power from the signal itself. So, for logical one, we should see much higher power. Very simple idea, uh, intensity modulation, direct detection. So, the advantages of this type of modulation, which historically was the first uh, modulation used in fiber optic communications. The advantages, above all else, is that it is simple and it is cheap. It's very inexpensive to implement IMDD. In addition, your transmission rate is essentially only limited by your electronics. As long as I can switch my laser on and off as fast as I can, I can send data that fast. The sources we can use are the one I just gave. We could use uh, directly modulated lasers, where my uh, RF signal is turning on and off the laser. I could use a continuous wave laser and an external amplitude modulator, where the modulator is blocking or sending the light. Uh, so both, both uh, solutions exist, both implementations exist. However, of course, there are several disadvantages to IMDD, and this is the reason, uh, the motivation for moving to coherent detection. One of the largest impairments comes from chromatic dispersion in an optical fiber, which limits either the data rate or the reach. Because if I try to go very fast, if I'm going to a short distance, then the chromatic dispersion is not so bad. But if I keep going faster and faster, eventually the pulse that I'm sending will disperse. And when it disperses, it'll bump into the pulse, the pulse next to it when I'm sending two bits in succession. And therefore, I cannot send bits that are too short, too close, because the dispersion will uh, lead to what we call intersimple interference and degrade performance. Of course, there are ways to get around chromatic dispersion. I could use what we call dispersion-shifted fibers in order to uh, counteract the dispersion during transmission by putting at the end something that shifts it back. But this is an expensive, bulky, an inconvenient solution, one that we've moved away from. And another one is to use some device which can compensate the dispersion, such as a fiber bread grating. And these, expo uh, these uh, solutions are less expensive, less bulky, but they're still inconvenient. They're still uh, effective for um, a given uh, length, and it it's just uh, difficult to manage and deploy in complex networks such as mesh networks with interconnections. Now, it also has 
fairly low spectral efficiency. Spectral efficiency is how much information I can send in a given bandwidth. And what that means is that although I would said it was an advantage here, the only thing limiting our transmission was the electronic speed, it means that this is a hard, hard thing to beat. And I, when I go to coherent detection, I'll talk about it briefly, is we can get by this speed limit from the electronics because we can increase our spectral efficiency, which will increase our throughput in our data communications. And the last dis disadvantage of IMDD is that it is very, very difficult to exploit polarization multiplexing. And that means to take the polarization of light and to use it to actually encode data onto uh, my light signal. There are solutions, but they're very expensive and impractical. I will mention one other kind of intensity modulation. It doesn't have to be binary. We can use what we call pulse amplitude modulation. And pulse amplitude modulation is not just binary. It can have multiple levels. Like on off keying, I am mod modulating the amplitude of the sig signal. And like on off keying, the way that I uh, detect this signal is by essentially detecting power. So if binary, I have you know no light, and I would have my you know maximum power I can get out of my sing signal, and this um, max sorry maximum power. And this would be my logical 1 and my logical 0 if I'm doing on-off keying. Well, when I use pulse amplitude modulation, I get a couple intermediate levels. That means that I have to detect different levels, which is a little more challenging, a little more subject to noise, a little less reliable. But it does mean that in one symbol time, in the time of one symbol, I can get multiple bits transmitted. And because I'm transmitting multiple bits in the same amount of time, binary compared to four-level PAM, four-level PAM sends more information. We say that it's more spectrally efficient in the same uh, time interval or in the same occupied bandwidth, I send more bits. So this sort of bypasses that disadvantage I said, which was low spectral efficiency, and that you cannot pass the electronics limit. So it is possible to get by that, even with IMDD. However, IMDD, and, and I'll contrast that with coherent detection in a few minutes, uh, which is also more spectrally efficient. Pulse amplitude modulation has this, this uh, disadvantage, is that it, it requires much more signal-to-noise ratio for the same increase in spectral efficiency that I might get when I'm using coherent detection. So what are some other disadvantages? It's uh, not just that it's uh, binary, but pulse amplitude mo uh, modulation, it retains some of those other disadvantages I mentioned earlier. It's still limited by chromatic dispersion, a little and more so even in the, in the binary case, and it's very difficult, just as difficult to exploit polarization multiplexing with pulse amplitude modulation as it is with on-off keying. So we've taken a look now at direct detection. Let's look at coherent detection next. In coherent detection, my strategy in modulation at the transmitter side is not just to play with amplitude, but to also play with the phase of the signal, to encode information both in amplitude and in phase. What this means is that for some information symbols, they will have the same amplitude, and what distinguishes them is their phase. That means that I can no longer rely just on power detection, because if the only thing different is the phase, of course they'll have the same power, and detecting power alone is not sufficient for me to exploit this idea of transmitting information on two different dimensions, on the amplitude dimension and the phase dimension. Now, if this is my transmitter strategy to use a amplitude and phase modulation, then I need at the detector, I need a receiver that actually allows me to observe the phase of the signal, which is not possible with a simple photo detector. We have to find a receiver structure that allows us to recover the phase 
and to exploit that phase to send data, to transmit data on that phase. So the advantages of going with coherent detection is that chromatic dispersion, chromatic dispersion is a deterministic effect in the fiber transmission. And it can be completely removed with digital signal processing. And in terms of bulky, expensive, and inconvenient, all those things go away with digital signal processing. It's non-zero complexity, but it's much less complex than any of the other optical solutions to get around chromatic dispersion. It's very straightforward when I use coherent detection, in particular when I use amplitude and phase for modulation, it's very straightforward to increase, increase the data rate beyond this electronic speed limit. So that's a great advantage and great motivation for going to coherent detection. As it also happens, I can easily use polarization multiplexings. And this will allow me to double the transmission that I'm, uh, transmission rate of any signal I'm sending. If I can send one amount of data on one polarization and the same amount of data on the second polarization as well. And again, this is possible because of the digital signal processing that we can do uh, with coherent detection. In general, there's a wide variety of impairments that comes up in any optical communication system. And now that I've made the move to coherent detection, I have a Swiss army knife of many, many different dis digital signal processing solutions that I can throw at all those different kinds of impairments that I'm going to run across. So the advantages of coherent detection are very much centered on signal processing that the digital signal processing has been a major enabler of coherent detection. So part of the reason that the timing came, that coherent detection took over, is that the uh, computational power, the cost, the size of the electronics to do the digital signal processing has come down um, significantly. Of course, there's nothing for free. There are disadvantages also to coherent detection. And all of this digital signal processing I'm mentioning certainly is going to bring more complexity. Uh, power consumption I might meet here due to this digital signal processing. It also just in general requires more complex components. I'm no longer to be able to use a directly modulated laser and just flip it on and flip it off in order to send, send data. It also uh, requires a more complex receiver structure. It's not just a simple photo detector. So in general, more complexity comes with coherent detection. It also requires higher OSNR in order to do this straightforward increase in data rate. I have to have enough signal quality in order for that to happen. But if I do, it's very straightforward, not difficult.